fire postal here. Uh, so what do we got here? Looks like we got a B29. I'm gonna call it a B32 way too often in this video and I apologize ahead of time. Uh, so, this plane, I was able to grind it for the most part. Um, I skipped one mission, which was the Doolittle mission of all ones. Um, and I appreciate those that um, helped me out with that and so provided me certificates ahead of time just in case I needed them. Um, I probably could have gotten a Doolittle, but I wanted to try to get this plane sooner rather than later. So that way I could produce this video. This is literally the first flight in my B-29. Um, let's see what we can get done with it. It's one in the morning. Um, it is a tier nine battle. And as you may have noticed, I have changed the paint to the try hard paint. I do not, I did not keep the 5% silver uh, chrome paint. I have changed it to the, um, it's the 5% crew experience or 5% plane experience. I thought that seems like kind of a waste. As cool as that paint looks, I actually really like the paint schemes that um, they've got available here. So obviously it's B29. We're just dropping a crap ton of bombs, right? This is a carpet bomber, um, like quintessential carpet bomber at this point. Uh, this plane's kind of far away for us to be attacking, so we're just kind of, kind of doing our thing. And that took too long to turn around. And we capped the sector anyway. All right, so let's pay attention to what's going on here. All right. Uh, again, I like the paint scheme. Uh, I don't know what the E stands for. I probably should look that up. Um, so what is this plane? Honestly, it's a souped up B-32. You have the same bomb loadout as the B-32 has. You have more hit points, which is pretty crazy. You have 2,500 hit points. There's not a lot of planes in the game that have more hit points than that. I can't even think of anything off the top of my head. And this thing's tier eight, right? Um, what if this was, you know, what, what's gonna happen when the American lines fill out to tier 10? You're gonna have some 3,000 hit point planes, maybe? I suppose it matters what style plane they are. Uh, this plane needs these hit points, though. This plane, just because you have that amount of hit points doesn't mean that you can just Play it all willy-nilly and get yourself into way too much trouble. Um, the hit points are there for a reason because that's really... You don't have any maneuverability. You definitely don't have any speed. Um, your altitude performance is okay. It's better than the B-32, of course, and it's, it's pretty good, all things considered. Um, but there's certainly a lot of things that are going to be up here. When I first hopped in this... I saw there's a 262 and an HG2 as the heavy fighters, and I knew, I mean, those planes just tear this plane up, um, especially as my first time out. So, some of the other planes that I might have issues with, uh, this attacker, I keep looking at him, he's staying away from me, which is probably smart. Um, fighters versus this, if you're coming in at a, um, horizontal angle, you're going to get torn up pretty well. And dang it, they captured this sector before I could even drop a bomb. So, we're fully reloaded though. So let's go over here and see what we can do versus the airbase. We've done a whole lot, have we? Um, but, I mean, that's part of the bomber's job, is to stay out of trouble. To have a positive impact on the battle, by not dying, and um, you know, kind of being the sneaky ground assassin, if that's even possible, when you're in something as freaking huge as this, right? I'm trying to speed up here in between the little sections. Got a something behind me, but I'm just gonna drop both of those here. And whatever's behind me decided to not stay behind me, so. Full, full load of bombs dropped here. Should have a pretty good impact on, uh, no pun intended, on flipping this particular sector. All right, excellent. So the reload's so long on this plane that I usually don't even boost 
between sectors. Um, I, I boost up to my altitude that I want to get to. And now that I'm waiting for the reload, it's like there's not a huge rush to get to this next sector. Uh, at some point, I'm sure I will you know, boost up here. When it comes to carpet bombers like this, you definitely need to... What, what I was failing at pretty significantly with the B-17s um, is your angle of attack. You need to know the sector that you're attacking pretty well, so that way you're getting a, a, a good line of damage being dropped. Um, otherwise, you're kind of wasting a lot of those bombs on nothingness, right? So I know the angle of attack on this particular sector. Uh, it's angling down just a little bit. Oop, I'm going a little bit too fast. I don't think I'm going to be able to drop on this first AA. Nope, don't take the chance. Get to this one, drops away. Let's see if we can't. Wiggle, wiggle. Okay, drop another load, I believe. Yeah, so if I was coming from the other direction, like this would have completely failed, right? Um, there's obviously some room for improvement. I know I'm not the best bomber pilot. I'm flying this thing so you guys can just see it. See what you're trying to grind towards if you want. See what are you doing, dude? That was not the best idea for that attacker. If you're going to be attacking this plane in something that doesn't have a lot of hit points, and doesn't have incredibly strong cannons. You need to attack it from directly above and directly below. You can see when I'm um, you know, attempting to defend myself directly above and directly below is the worst. I mean, there's there's no ability to to uh, defend directly above and below. So even if you're in a plane like a 262 or uh, XP58 that has huge cannons. You're going to want to um, attack directly from above and directly below. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to go for the other... Yeah, I'm going to go for the other uh, airbase. I just flipped anyway. I still have some time before my bombs are loaded. Watch out for what's going on here. Mm, heavy fighter. I'm at half health, which is still, you know, 1,200 health. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Let's see if we can get another bomb drop off. Uh, we've had pretty darn good impact on this battle, right? Um, pretty well set up for the win at this point. Oh, no. Uh, leave me alone. All right, cool. Using my boost now. <laughs> Not messing around with this. So this with my altitude. I tend to hold it. The kind at the highest optimum. Now, obviously, this plane can get up to 10,000 and higher, but it's going to be even slower then, and the accuracy is going to be up even. Whoa! Shenanigans. Well, there goes way too much of my health. Let's see if I can't get some more drops off here. Oh, crap. What is hitting me? Oh, super crap. Freaking TA 152. Oh, my God. takes a plane like a B-29 to be able to get hit by a 152. They don't tend to uh, like attacking fighters, that's for sure. Alright, I, I believe we've set ourselves up for the win, though. Um, I didn't realize we had a 1092 on our team. The enemy team's got that attacker. Um, but we still have the center location, so there's, there's really no reason why we're not going to win this. Um, and this being my first game in the B-29, I'm really enjoying the plane. Um, I liked the B-32. Um, B-29, one game in, it's just a bigger, better version. Now, granted, this game didn't have human heavies that, you know, were going to be something that I'd have to really fear. Um, but you'd still want to play by these tactics of avoidance and paying attention to what sector is going to be the next best sector to attack. Alright. Excellent. And got ourselves a leg. That's funny.
you can tell this is my first battle in it because I forgot to hit the freaking accelerate crew training. All right, so overall, like, did we do anything crazy? Not in my opinion. Um, what, 95,000 crown damage, 400 capture points. Um, 13,000 personal points, so nothing over the top crazy, right? Did get a Lang, which, you know, you can never can never go wrong getting a Lang, right? And um, it overall felt very, very comfortable in a tier 9 battle. Um, we were not allowing the attacker to hurt us. In fact, the things that were going to hurt us are the things that you'd expect to hurt us anyway, which are going to be the heavy fighters or the planes that have heavy fighter guns, a.k.a. this TA-152. It's why I played this, this plane at the top of its optimal altitude performance. That way, if I needed to try to jump up higher, I could. Um, you know, the, the 262 and the HG-2, um, this plane right here, they were up as high as I were was plus higher. So, you know, going up to 10,000 feet wasn't going to get me away from them. I'd rather be in the optimum altitude and having a little bit better accuracy than going up higher, being a little slower, having worse accuracy, and really not getting away from the things I'm trying to get away from anyway. But, again, I played at the highest of the optimum altitude, so if I needed to get higher, I could get higher. Um, for that matter, if I needed to dive down, I could dive down. Um... <sighs> So, the B-32, I, A, I think it's a freaking wonderful looking plane. Um, I did change the paint, as you can see. I think it is some really cool paint. Um, summer paint. And I, of course, kept the, um, the Indian, American Indian, um, like, nose and emblems. The, um, the, I don't know, it just looks really awesome as far as I'm concerned, so I definitely wanted to keep that. Anyway, here's summer paint. You've got your winter paint, which is what uh, you just saw the battle in. Here's your desert paint. And then lastly, you've got your marine paint. Um, all of it, in my opinion, is pretty cool looking. I know it's not um, historically accurate, but um, since when do we care about that? Um, for the service. So keep in mind, this was literally my first battle. Um, I'm nowhere near having this plane specialized, um, and I just built it for built it for survivability. Improved cockpit armor, improved engine armor. Um, on the turret here, I've gone ahead and put the gun sight because I want to improve the range of uh, the turrets while I'm firing them defensively. Once I specialize the plane, then obviously I'll, I'll improve all this. On the airframe, I'll do the reinforced airframe, which will add even more hit points. On the outboard weapons, um, kind of confused on what to do with the outboard weapons. I guess the bombing accuracy is what I would, would be going with. Oh my god, it's actually available to me. Oh my god, I'm a freaking idiot. I thought it was locked. Alright, so this gives me the opportunity to at least talk about it. So, these are not outboard weapons. So keep that in mind. Things that impact, so this helps the, the reload speed will reduce the aircraft speed. This, the aerodynamics, let me, let me just start over again. <laughs> so stunned by my stupidity. The aerodynamic pylons are worthless in this plane because it reduces the impact of the outboard rockets and bombs in the airspeed. Well, these are internal bombs, so they don't impact the airspeed. And so all this will do is give you a negative. The positive won't do anything because there's no positive to make positive. Rocket sight, it's the same thing. There's no freaking rockets. These two are useless. Don't use these. We can attempt to improve the outboard weapon's reload speed. Ooh. Or we can help the bombing accuracy, which will actually lower their reload speed. Ah. I'm going to go for this. And the reason being, although I probably have a million... Oh, I don't have any of those. Okay. Um, I'm going to go for this, and the reason being is because the... The reload speed I really do want to help. Yeah, I'm hurting the airspeed somehow. Um, but, I'm like, it's worth it. The plane's not all that fast anyway. I want to try to get um, the reload speed down. 
Rocket accuracy. What does that... What is the point of you? And uh, what are my other options here? Bombing accuracy. That wouldn't that make sense? There you go. Freaking more gaming and your shenanigans. Great. So my bombing accuracy is impacted there. My which is putting me up to 217 here, which is just ridiculous. Um and my reload speed is down six seconds, or it will be down six seconds as soon as I click apply. So from 80 seconds to 74, yay! And it'll be even better as I build that up. I can't believe I didn't notice that the first time. Wow. Um, so yeah, that's how I would have that set up. The pilot and the gunner, I simply have them set up the same way that I've got them. I mean, these are my basic, basic American bomber um, pilots and gunner. Uh, this is not this is the same pilot and gunner that I brought up from the B-17 and the B-17 <laughs> and the B-32. So now I B-32 pilot. I've simply put on here, and my recommendation for the first thing is just Demolition Expert. You want more damage? You want more blast radius? Demolition Expert's going to do it um, and make your, make your bomber that much more effective. Uh, it makes your ground attackers that much more effective. Next, uh, I've got my fourth point. Put protection expert on here, and um, you know again just to help everything that that it will be helping. Um, obviously, it's helping the the equipment I've already got on there. But once I specialize the plane and I put things on like the reinforced airframe, whatever bonus that gives, this gives forty percent bonus to that bonus. So, you know, if it's five percent hit points, well now it's going to be five percent plus forty percent, um, which is what another. 2%, so it's 7%. Um, it adds up. Uh, for the gunner, my first priority on a gunner, honestly, in, in a plane that can't really get away, is going to be defensive fire. Defensive fire, um, the the aircraft that the gunner is firing at, that aircraft is doing 30 less damage, 30% less damage. That's pretty significant and can help you survive. Um, quick reflexes is always helpful, just to help the aiming time. My next two that I'm going to be going for are going to be armor, so my burst length is longer. And then the real point of it, though, is to get a ballistics expert, so that may, that way the range of fire can be an additional 10%. Then past there, I mean, I'll worry about that at a later time. That's 10 points. It's going to take me a while to get 10 points. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we'll just keep on plugging along there. Um, I can tell you, I mean, this is just one battle, right? And I wasn't against humans at tier 9, I was against bots that were at tier 9. Oh, no, I guess the attacker was tier 9. I didn't have any threats that were humans at tier 9. Um, hell, the Jawa could have been tier 9 if I think about it. I didn't really pay too much attention to it because the Jawa is such a low altitude, right? I uh, know this one was tier 8. But even if this was the tier 9, the J7W2 just doesn't have the altitude performance to stay up and do a whole lot of damage to me. Now do keep in mind when you're in a B-32, much like um, B-29, just like you were in the B-32, directly above and directly below are going to be your blind spots, right? Everywhere else, everything dies. Everything around here, dead, 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 dead. Eh, the front not as much, but still, you're getting shot at. If you're attacking directly from on top or directly from below, that's it's the B-29's blind spot, and that's where you're going to do the most damage and get away with um, attacking it straight on. Um, I've attacked this plane directly with an XP-58 from below. Took you know, a matter of seconds, was able to kill it. Didn't even think about it and moved on. Um, I didn't think about it so much. The next time I attacked it, I attacked it from behind and just got completely torn up. Completely torn up. So you need to be mindful of where you're attacking uh, B-29 from, because otherwise this 20 millimeter cannon ain't messing around here on the back. The rest of it's 50 cal machine guns, but there's a ton of them, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you've got 8 of them, plus the 20 millimeter cannon. Um, it's just a lot. It's a lot of firepower, uh, but it needs that. It's not, it's, it's faster than the B-32, but it's still not anything crazy fast. Um, Obviously, there's no maneuverability, no nothing going on here. Um, it's all about its hit points, but even its hit points are only just going to hold hold you for a little bit longer. 
Um, and that's about all they're going to do. 2,500 hit points is a hell of a lot of hit points. And yet, um, still, still torn up there at the end. So, um, yeah, so I hope this is uh, helpful. Oh, there's four, four machine guns here. My bad. Not two. So is that four, six, eight, ten? And are these two machine guns too? So is that twelve plus a cannon? I guess I could look right here. Two, four, six, ten, twelve. Yeah, that is two. Two uh, 50 cal machine guns and a 20 millimeter cannon. So yeah, I mean it's just, it's a beast. Um, it's a really pretty beast though. I really do like the way this plane looks and um, I had a lot of fun flying it. The grind for me um, wasn't all that difficult. It was tedious but it wasn't difficult. Um, what are we in? We're two weeks in, a little, yeah two weeks in, exactly two weeks basically at this point. Um, and I didn't fly every day. Um, I flew more than I normally fly. But I didn't fly every day and was able to get it in two weeks. I skipped one mission. That was the um, the um, Doolittle, of all things, which is funny considering this is the plane that you get a Doolittle in, basically, or any bomber. Um, I skipped that. The rest of them I did fly. Um, Marseille took me one mission. Uh, Hero of the Sky took me one mission. A lot of these, uh, it's not even going to let me show it, is it? Oh, crap. A lot of them that that only required, you know, some getting something done in one mission. I was fortunate enough to get them done in one mission. Um, it's the ones that, you know, you got to kill 75 multi rolls or 100 air defense aircraft or yada yada yada. Those that no matter what are going to take a handful or dozens and dozens of flights. Those are the ones that are really tedious. They're not difficult. They're just super tedious. But I recognize not everybody's going to be able to get a Marseille. I, I was fortunate enough to get a Marseille in one go, right? play the plane, play the P-80A, um, plane that I'm very, very comfortable in, and um, just got 18 kills in my first in my first go-around. Um, you know, Hero of the Sky, went into went in a uh, an IL-40P, because I knew it was something that I could get in a Hero of the Sky relatively easily, because I know how to get the chevrons on a ground attacker. Um, you know, so I, I'm not going to pretend to uh, make it seem like everybody can get this in two weeks but if you're good at bombers or you just enjoy bombers um, this already seems like a good plane to me I'm not even a really a bomber pilot and I enjoyed my first battle in it so um, you know who knows what somebody could do who's actually good with bombers in this plane anyway that's enough uh, rambling on I appreciate you hanging out with me do you happen to have the B-29 what's your opinion on this premium plane did you grind it? Did you just buy it? Um, was it worth the grind? Did you grind half and buy half? That's kind of what I was assuming I was going to be doing. I was fully prepared to spend about $27 on this, get 100 tokens, and um, use them. I was fortunate enough to not have to. Just everything kind of lined up for me. But not everybody's going to be, you know, I, I just, I've realized if, if this was six months ago for me, it's, this wouldn't have gone by as quickly for me, right? Um, just things things are working out properly for me in the game. Um, so yeah, I do want to hear your opinions. Was it worth a grind? Is it something you enjoy? Was it worth the money if you spent money on it? Um, and if so, what did you what do you really enjoy about this plane? I want uh, I want to hear down below, or you know, feel free to message me in Discord. I tend to be in Discord as often as I can be. Um, whereas comments on, on YouTube sometimes I can't catch those right away. Yeah, have a great day. See you out on the battlefield. Bye.